This is, without a doubt, one of the best news stories I have heard in a very long time. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. Fantastic to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Unreal to have you here. Welcome back to everyone else. 2022, boy, it's going to be fantastic. And if you want to help out the channel in 2022, I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account. A big shout out, big thank you to our Patreon supporters. You really do make a huge difference to this channel being what it is. Now, Shell has just turned a petrol, a gas station, into an EV charging station. Now, this is the beginning of what will be a very common occurrence within the next few years. I think within the next probably 10 years, probably half of the petrol stations, gas stations that we see around the planet in the West, in China, will have been converted to electric stations. Yep. They're going to change them to electric stations. That's what petrol stations, gas companies, that's what they're going to have to do to stay relevant. Now, Evanex says on their website that European oil companies are getting into the EV charging business in a big way. Now, Shell's new EV hub in London looks impressive. Now, the oil giant, which currently operates a network of nearly 8,000 electric vehicle charging points, has converted an existing petrol station in Fulham in central London to an electric vehicle charging hub that features 10 175 kilowatt DC fast charging stations built by Australian manufacturer Tritium. Tritium or Tritium, Tritium, I don't know how you pronounce it. Sorry, Tritium, Tritium. They are very impressive. They're building charging stations everywhere. Now this hub will offer a comfortable seating area for waiting EV drivers along with a coaster coffee store and a Little Waitrose and Partners shop. I've never heard of Little Waitrose and Partners, but um, sounds good. Now, this hub features solar panels on the roof, and Shell says the charges will be powered by 100% certified renewable electricity, which is not that hard to do if you're in England, in the UK, because honestly, a lot of their power now comes from renewable energy. They even had 100 days last year where they didn't use coal power at all. They used only renewable energy for 100 days. Incredible. Now, this new electric station, what are we going to call them? We call them gas stations, petrol stations in Australia, gas stations in the US. I don't know what you call them in Europe, but what are we going to call them? We need a name. Electric station just doesn't have the right ring to it. Let me know in the comment section below what we should call them or give us some ideas anyway. Now, many urban dwellers in the UK who would otherwise be likely EV buyers don't have the option of charging at home because they live in apartment blocks. That's more difficult for them as they have no assigned parking spaces and rely on on-street parking. This is a little bit of a problem, but it's one that manufacturers are starting to address now. As in many cities around the world, charging points are actually starting to be built in the street so that people who park in the street can charge in the street as well. Don't worry, there is a solution to every challenge. That's what this whole movement is about. Now, Shell launched a similar EV hub in Paris and France earlier this year. The company is also pursuing other ways to provide charging for the driveway-less masses. It aims to install 50,000 on-street charging posts across the UK by 2025. And it's collaborating with grocery chain Waitrose in the UK to install 800 charging points at stores by 2025. Now I have on my computer open right now about 85 different tabs of all the different charging points being built out across all these different countries, universities, colleges, the streets like this. I mean, 50,000 in one city from one company. You can imagine how many there will be by 2030. They will be everywhere. I think range anxiety could potentially be a thing of the past for most people by then because charging points will be far more common. And I mean, I mean a hundred times more common than petrol stations and gas stations. Plus, in addition to that, most people do have, have the capacity to charge their cars at home. Now, some of the naysayers are saying things like, well, if this was a petrol station or a gas station in a major city, then the land would be worth more as apartments than as an electric charging station. Well, there's a big problem with that. Trying to convert a petrol station or a gas station into land that's capable of having apartments on it is an enormous job. Astronomical job, in fact. It's much easier to simply put a charging station on it and some restaurants and things which you can also make money from. Now, I think Shell has made a smart move here by installing 
shops, eateries, and a place where people can spend time while their car charges. That's a great idea in my view. And I think that's gonna become more and more common. In terms of Shell, are they the good guys or are they the bad guys? Well, a company can do things that are both right and wrong. And I think it's equally important to criticize the bad and praise the good. And realistically, I absolutely love what Shell are doing by installing 50,000 chargers across streets all over London. I think you'll find that other companies will do similar things and there'll be literally hundreds of thousands of chargers all across the world's major cities by 2030. That is the good news. Things are getting better and better when it comes to electric cars, renewable energy, and batteries. Thanks for watching the channel and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.